Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be counting down 10 games that you really liked, but that we thought were complete and utter dog shit. So remember, if you're new it, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. See you after this. Bollocks. So there's no real order to this list. Number one isn't the worst, number 10 isn't the best, right? But if you are a CJ Young acolyte, then maybe you can find some kind of reason why some games are more reviled than others. So number 10 on this list is a reprint of a game that we still really enjoy, right? It's Libertalia, the something or other of Galecrest, right? The original Libertalia was great, yeah? In this game, you will have a bunch of pirate crew. Everyone will have the same cards, but everyone will be choosing a different card each round. You'll be placing a card face down. Everyone will reveal, and then you'll activate these characters in order of rank. The idea is to get booty and avoid getting tokens that will lose your points at the end of the game, right? The reprint was published by Stonemaier Games. They took all of the grittiness and all of the dirtiness out of the original game. They replaced the quite fantastic artwork in the original with some cartoon characters, right? And they took out all of the offensive material. Not that it was offensive in the first place, yeah? I mean, how they managed to balls this one up is beyond me, yeah? The Windsor Galcrest is as sterile as a unit that's had an irreversible vasectomy, right? I'm not saying Libertalia is a shit game. It's not. It's just that there seems to be this movement towards removing any kind of material that is offensive to at least one person, yeah? And for that reason, Reason, we chucked it in the dumpster. It's number nine on our list of dog shit games that you loved and we fucking hated is Summoner Wars, yeah? This is a beloved game, I understand that, right? But I still remember my first game of Summoner Wars, opening up that box, finding a shitty paper mat and finding that you're going to be using cards as units, right? The aesthetic of the game is complete crap. It's like somebody has mixed up a lot of sick in a cement mixer and just splashed it all over the board, right? This game works on the principle of getting different factions, yeah? The master set gives you a few, right? Right, but not enough. You're going to have to go out and buy extra factions in order to explore this game. And even then, where each unit has its own special ability, it's very difficult to remember what each bloody unit does. I understand why people like this game, yeah? But for me, it was like a boring slog. I'd rather play games like Memoir 44, which at least have a little bit more of a cheery attitude, right? Summon of Wars recently got reprinted, and I'd rather kiss somebody with the plague than play that game, all right? So the next game on this list of our top 10 god-awful abominations is the detective game from Portal Games, yeah? Do you remember when Portal Games used to make decent games, albeit with shitty rule books? but do you remember Stronghold? Do you remember Robinson Crusoe, Escape from the Cursed Island, right? What the fuck has happened to Portal Games, yeah? All they do now is just regurgitate stuff that was successful about 10 years ago and chuck it on GameFound, hoping to get $2 million and release a pile of shit four years later. Anyway, detective, right? It was a great idea in principle, I was thinking, why well, this was going to be Sherlock Holmes Consultant Detective 2.0, right? It was going to be a completely different game experience. What we found was that the writing was absolutely awful. It was like a five-year-old had been given a typewriter from 2001. And there were portions in the game where you just didn't know what the fuck you were meant to do. So you ended up just wading through a fucking swimming pool of lead. This was one of the most disappointing games for me. I had really high hopes for this one. But if you look at Portal Games' recent track record, then really it's like a case that you should really try this before you buy it, right? Or just avoid portal games all together because for me if you add this to first martians and all the other debacles then it's really not worth the hassle so um, 10 9 so the next game on our list of complete and utter cow shit games is the seventh continent funnily enough this is number seven on this list right we backed this on kickstarter many moons ago and it was lauded as one of the greatest gaming experiences ever known to humanity in the universe right what it turned out to be was a fighting fantasy game book laid out on a table yeah with some cards in this game you'll be laying cards on a table and uncovering a story it's great for the first hour or so and then the story just dissipates into thin air, right? If you add to this, you have to discard items and different things in order to take actions. It might be the case that you will be forced into a position where you'll be discarding items that you need later on. And you'll be thinking, well, fucking hell, why did I discard that bleeding axe and when I need it now? I'd just rather play a fighting fantasy game book than get involved in this, yeah, because it had a save game system that allowed you to put the cards back in a box. But then setting it all up again was a real massive pain in the ass. So yeah, Seventh Continent, it probably promised shitloads and it delivered.
delivered, fuck all for me. So just go and get a choose your own adventure book instead of spending 80 quid on this pile of crap. So the next game on this list of games that you absolutely love and we absolutely hated is Spirit Island. And I know that loads of you out there, especially you cunts at the back, really do like this game. I'll tell you why. In this game, you'll be playing the role of spirits on an island. You'll be fighting off these nasty little colonists that have taken root on your beloved homeland. And each of these spirits has a load of asymmetrical abilities, right? It's a cooperative game that sort of flips things on its head. In Catan, obviously, you are colonising the island. But in this you're trying to get rid of the imperialists right the problem with this game is trying to teach the fucking thing where everybody has got more often than not complex spirit to work with if you're playing with say four or five players you're gonna have to teach each one of these spirits individually right and if somebody doesn't understand something then really you are fucked another problem with this is that you can get halfway through the game and know that you are never ever going to win right so you just end up playing out the last hour or so for no point at all you might as well just say well i don't think we can win have a vote and then just throw the game into an open fire so yeah spirit island was another massive disappointment for us we got the uh the, the larger expansion hoping that that would fix some of the problems and it didn't it just exacerbated it so yeah we might be on the wrong side of history with this one but shit so the next game on our list dog shit games is pax Premier second edition fuck here now what a fucking nightmare this one was yeah i could feel a migraine starting in the back of my head and gradually working its way up to behind my eyes right in pax Premier, you'll be playing some shitty cards you'll be putting these horrible looking blocks onto a fabric mat hoping to get victory points right sounds easy enough but the main beef i got with this game is that towards the end of the game victory points for doing stuff is doubled so you could do fuck all for the first portion of the game wait until the last part of the game mop up a few victory points which haven't been any more difficult to attain and win the fucking game how stupid is that fucking hate packs premiere i hate it because you get these people saying well you played the game wrong oh you got to play it multiple times or maybe these complicated games aren't for you no i don't think so we knew what we were doing and it's another one of them games that sort of ranks high on these top 10 top 100 lists and when you play it just leaves you feeling like you shouldn't have got up in the morning so yeah nice try packs for me a second edition but you might as well flush yourself down the toilet right so the next game was it number one two three four five? number four on our list of games that we absolutely hated but you absolutely love is root so we got drawn into this game right the cutesy little theme of all these little woodland animals running around sort of drew us in a little bit yeah but we had the same problem that we have with spirit island is the asymmetrical abilities right trying to teach each faction to a different player is nigh on impossible in our group you might love it yeah you might love punching yourself in the face but i would recommend doing that over playing root if you had to that some balancing issues a lot of games where you've got these sort of asymmetrical abilities tend to subconsciously favor one faction over the other and there were loads and loads of occasions on this game where you just sat there thinking well i can't do fuck all well somebody else is out there spraying their jizz all over the map i couldn't even imagine playing this game with all those sodden expansions yeah can you imagine that it's like enough of a hot mess as it is and ordinarily i can understand why people like certain games but this one you might as well drop an anvil on your head because that is much more fun than this so the next game on our list of our top 10 complete and utter dog shit games is the pursuit of happiness right i backed this on kickstarter a long time ago when it first was released and i thought it's gonna be like a sims video game translated into a board game right how wrong was i this turned out to be a bean counting exercise where you just chuck cubes out onto a board and gain different things that have no thematic link to what you're doing so you might end up getting a new cooker and chucking a few cubes on it right for no reason at all you might just end up moving into a bigger house because you do right the one thing this game did get right is that you move through life so you born obviously some of you at the back probably haven't even been born yet you go through puberty and then you end up getting old and you die right which is about what life is like you are born you do some meaningless bullshit stuff and then you die right so happiness was just an exercise in futility for me really really wanted to like this game and it just turned out to be completely empty a bit like your miserable existence so don't believe the hype yet it's nothing like the sims if anyone tells you the pursuit of happiness is the sims translated into a board game they are lying out of their fucking ass this is more like that horrible will smith movie where he ends up sleeping in a public toilet because that's where i put this one 
So the next game on this list of complete like dog shit games is Dominant Feces. Freudian slip dominant species. Ordinarily, we should like this game, right? It's worker placement. You put your workers out on a board, take the action, right? Do something on the main board. And that's all good and well. I like that portion of the game. I like the way that it changes things up, that you're not just uh, raiding natives in the Caribbean, right? That you are taking control of insects or some kind of dinosaur type thing, right? The problem I got with Dominant Species got to stop saying feces, is that you constantly have to check for dominance, right? And this can change at any time during the game. You've got these horrible little cone things that represent dominance, and then you've got these tokens that represent other stuff, and you end up going around the hexes going, right, one, two, three, four, so I'm dominant there. And then you go around to the next one and say, well, he's dominant over there, and she's dominant over there. Oh, hang on a minute, I forgot to count that one, so I have to do that one. And constantly checking the fucking dominance in this game. It's like a sex pest, constantly checking for herpes. I fucking hate dominant species. It's probably one of the worst games I've ever played, right? I tried this multiple times and every single time I just couldn't finish the game. I had to stop halfway through because I was gasping for air. I felt like I was sinking through the earth's crust into the magma and just getting burnt from my toes upwards. That's not to say that I haven't been tempted to venture back into this dark, dank cave, right? I've been tempted to get this game again because things change, don't they? People's opinions change over time, but I haven't mustered up the courage yet to filter through all of the fecal matter that makes up dominant speed and maybe I never will. So the final game on this list of god awful games that you really like and I fucking hate is a game that I know all of you lot like. Everybody loves this game. And I'm going to stand outside the circle on this one because I fucking hate it. It's Wingspan. There's a couple of reasons why I don't like Wingspan, right? One is that it's fucking boring, yeah? The theme doesn't speak to me at all. I don't give a fuck about birds, yeah? Two, it's basically top trumps with birds, right? You've got a bunch of statistics on a card and you'll be trying to collect these cards to give you points in a tableau right that's it it's top trumps of birds mate the third thing is that they sold you a 50 quid game with a load of useless bling you don't need that fucking bird tower yeah you don't need it just roll the dice on a table you don't need those fancy little fucking mini eggs don't need them and you don't need these big old boards that are going to take up a huge amount of table space they could have sold this game to you for 15 fucking quid in a pack of fucking cards that's what they could have done but they didn't they wanted to rip you off and make you spend money on shit you didn't need and that really fuck me off so when you've got a market employee that tries to manipulate the consumer and you've got a depthless and toothless game underneath it put them two together and whilst i said these games aren't ranked i'm going to make an exception for wingspan in fact i'm going to make a i hate wingspan facebook group and i'll probably be the only one in it so yeah, if you like wingspan that's fine go off and play a little bird game yeah i'll stick with top trumps for birds it's cheaper so you go, that's our, well, it's not a top 10, is it? But it's 10 games that you really liked, but we really hated. And we don't care about your opinion because we are always right here and you are always wrong. If you don't like that, fuck off and have a wank in the bath. See you next time.